Okay, I'm not saying Notion copied Google, but we know that cal.new opens up a new calendar event, meet.new opens up a new Google Meets, sheets.new opens up a new Google Sheets file, and notion.new opens up a new Notion page. Suspicious. Nah, I'm just playing. This shortcut is awesome. Let's get started. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeff, and in this video, I'm gonna be sharing 14 of my favorite Notion tips and workflows that have drastically improved my experience with this tool. Since there is quite a bit of content to cover, I've broken these down into three different categories. Time savers designed to speed up your workflow, organizational tips to help you better manage your Notion workspace, and aesthetics that preserve the function functionality of your setup while making it look nice and pretty. Exhibit A. Just kidding. Going straight into tip number two, create template buttons for items or pages you need to duplicate on a regular basis. If you watch my weekly planner video, you might have noticed I primarily use the template button in two ways. First, I press the template button here to generate an empty uh, weekly planner page every Sunday evening. Second, within the planner page itself, I have a template button here that just generates checkboxes uh, for my to-do list, which is like five milliseconds faster than using the left bracket, right bracket shortcut, I know, but it adds up. If there's a part of your workflow that requires you to duplicate elements again and again, uh, journal entries, grocery lists, I highly recommend you create a template button by pressing forward slash template, uh, giving a name, magic button and dragging anything from individual blocks to entire pages into it. Time saver tip number three, take advantage of Notion's latest synced blocks feature. Staying within my weekly agenda page, you might have noticed that I have a daily to-do list and a weekly to-do list. What I used to do is at the end of every week on Sunday evenings, I would copy the weekly action items I have not gotten to yet and paste them into next week's planner page. To get rid of this extra step, I actually decided to make a synced block by copying the weekly action items column here, going into the agenda page template I would create every Sunday evening, and pasting it and selecting paste and sync. Now the tasks from last week, which I have not gotten to yet, are automatically brought over. And the, for the ones that are complete, I usually throw it into the archives page beforehand, so those do not show up in next week's weekly action item. Does that make sense? Tip number four, set smart reminders for yourself. So this tip is extremely helpful for those of you with a GTD or getting things done system in place. In short, if you wanna remind yourself to take an action within your Notion database, instead of capturing that in another app like Todoist, you can simply go to the block you want to come back to, press at remind, Click it, toggle on include time, and select when you wanna be notified. This way, Notion will actually notify you uh, either through desktop or mobile, uh, depending on your settings. And of course, it wouldn't be a Jeff Su video without keyboard shortcuts, so tip number five includes the ones I use every single day. To quickly go from one format, like a numbered list to a bullet point, instead of pressing backspace, dash space, or using the forward slash turn into function bullet, list, what you can do is simply, even with the number list in place, press dash space, and it automatically converts. What I, what I mainly use this for is for, let's say, a checkbox, big project. Instead of indented checkboxes underneath, I want to have bulleted list. Step one, step two, step three. And after indenting, you can actually press shift tab to unindent. I mentioned this already, but left bracket, right bracket to cr quickly create a checkbox. And for headers, you can use one pound sign to create header number one, two pound signs for header number two, double kill, three pound signs for header number three, triple tap. Just like how you would triple tap that like button. All right, uh, moving along, Command P or Control P on Windows to quickly search your entire workspace. What I like to do is add a filter and select only match titles to improve search accuracy. And I love to color code within my pages and it used to drive me crazy to have to click the block, choose color and choose a background color. Uh, right now, I just do forward slash color yellow and use my arrow keys and enter to select uh, the highlighted color. 
So as you can probably tell, I'm not an expert with Notion. If you have any time-saving tips I might have missed, please let me know down in the comment section below because I'd love to learn from you guys and take credit for it in my next Notion video. Um, moving over to organization. Tip number six is to use the Notion Web Clipper tool to quickly save a link and start taking notes in your Notion database. Whenever I come across any online content I wanna take notes on, let's say I'm watching Jeremy Ethier's latest video on push-ups so I can build out my D cup. I press the extension button here to quickly save the link into my knowledge database. I'm gonna make a whole nother video on how I use my knowledge database to quickly capture learnings uh, and inspirations from multiple sources. But for now, just know that the Web Clipper tool is able to bring over the link, the title, and the content in a neat little package for you to start taking notes on. Pro tip number one, you can press enter at the end of your page title to create a line right above your content. Uh, content below, color gray to make it look nice and structured. And pro tip number two is that if you have the Notion mobile app installed, you can actually clip links without installing anything extra. You just click the share button up top here. And if you don't see Notion by default, simply scroll to the right, click more and select Notion. Now you can literally just add to your workspace, press save. And within a couple of seconds, it should update directly in your Notion database. Notion organizational tip number seven is what I like to call hierarchical sort. Let me show you what I mean. So in this database, it has all my video ideas and I would like to first see the videos with an estimated published date up top and the remaining ones sorted by last updated. So what's cool about the sort function here is that the ranking dictates which one takes priority. So right now I'm telling Notion to prioritize the ones with an estimated published date. And then for those without a published date, list them in descending order by last updated. And on that note, I always create the created by and updated by properties in all my template pages since they're not created by default and hide them to keep the interface a little bit tidier. Tip number eight is to include an embedded archived page within every main page and template. This is simply an empty page at the bottom here with a files icon that can just throw any outdated information into. So in my weekly planner, I would just throw all the completed action items into the archive page so I can start the next day with a clean slate. And for those of you who are just gonna say, oh, why don't you just delete it? I have FOMO, okay? You never know when you need to reference that one task from two years ago and just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it'll never happen, so just let me be, all right? Clean Freak organizational tip number nine is a trick I picked up from Thomas Frank and it's a roundabout way to create nested columns within Notion. So this is what we want to achieve. One paragraph up here, two columns in the middle, and one paragraph at the bottom with a large image to the right that we can move freely. However, you'll find that if you try to do this the normal way, it doesn't work. If you try to move the large image to the right, it becomes very awkward and you can't even move it down here. It just doesn't work. So what you wanna do is first create a page and set up the two column structure like you normally would. One paragraph, two columns, and the third paragraph down here. And you embed it within a page. Now going back out, you move the large image to the right of that embedded page, and you click the embedded page and click turn into text. You just need to delete the header up here and voila, there you go with the nested columns. Very cool trick, Thomas, thank you very much. Tip number 10 is use the toggle feature to hide blocks, videos, screenshots that you want to reference, but do not want to take up too much uh, screen real estate. Uh, this is a very simple feature. Uh, everyone's probably using this already, but come on, look at how clean this keeps the entire page. Um, and by the way, this is a small teaser for my Notion book notes video that's coming up in the next one or two weeks. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Organizational tip number 11 is another quickie, and it's about how you can link to any specific block within Notion. This is very helpful if you have a very long page. Uh, this is my Google Photos video page. And at the bottom here, I actually want to reference keywords that I already have at the top. So what I would do is scroll all the way to the top, find the block that I need to copy, that I need to reference rather, uh, copy link, and go all the way back down, 
highlight this, Command K, and paste the link directly. So now when I click it, it just jumps directly to the block that I need to reference multiple times as I go through my video planning stages. Finally, moving over to aesthetics, AKA looking good. So tip number 12 is using your own custom icons instead of the default ones like the one here. So the platform I like to use is flat icons. And if I search for photos up here, I find one I really like, click download, download this and of course attribute the author, go back to my notion page, click the icon, upload an image, choose an image, select this image. And now I'm super unique. Tip number 13 is to have a consistent color scheme for recurring headers. For example, in all my pages with a notes section, the notes header will always have a gray background. And for the uh, pages with an action items or next steps section, the background will usually be in green. This consistent color scheme just helps my brain process the information on the page that much quicker. Last but not least, tip number 14 is use the comment feature to remind yourself of something without cluttering up the page with unnecessary text. So let's say in this column, I want to leave myself a note. I could add a few words in brackets, for example, um, new video idea and italicize it, but this is not ideal. Instead, what I can do is simply highlight the phrase I know I want to come back to, Command Shift M or Control Shift M on Windows, and simply add a comment. Now, the comment will only expand if you click on the highlighted phrase or click the comment icon here. This is just another example of how Notion gives equal weight to form and function. Please let me know down in the comments below if you have a tip to share with me. I'd love to hear from you. See you on the next video. And in the meantime, have a great one.